Hey guys, what's up? Vinayak here. In this video, you will learn how to design a control system for a remote control car. So you, you have a car powered by a DC motor. If you're in electrical or mechanical engineering, I'm sure at some point you will talk about the DC motor in your classes. It's a very useful mechanical device used to power small vehicles, also for like quadcopters and all that kind of stuff. So it's very practical and important. So you have for the DC motor, you have the equations of motion there. You have the motor speed, that's omega m. That's the most important part. The parameters like R and L and J and all that stuff. R is just the resistance, L is the inductance, and J is the moment of inertia. So these values are typically constant and you can find them in a DC motor spec sheet. So you can download that off the internet. The DC motor parameters that we will use are shown there you have the following constant values. And when you have a vehicle powered by a DC motor, you have to take into consideration the vehicle parameters also, right? So first of all, if it's a car, if it's a quadcopter, they all matter. So in this situation, since we have a car, you will have traction and uh, slip. So the values are the friction coefficient mu, that's very important. You have slip ratio S, you have the wheel size RW, the weight balance factor, so that just tells you how much of the weight is distributed on the motor. You have the gear ratio, you have the car mass, you have the car normal force, so if I have something pointing down, you have the normal force pointing up. It's just mg times q, and then the tire force, which is the friction coefficient times mgq. The slip ratio is simply the difference between the speeds of the back wheel and the front wheel and you divide that by the absolute value of the front wheel plus a small value close to zero so you can use omega the angular speed or you can also use v the linear speed because v equals r times omega so you just simply multiply it by the wheel radius so in this case the car is powered on the back wheel because the motor is on the back wheel so we put the front wheel in the denominator right so that's important it's also defined only from negative 1 to 1 because you can only get the friction from negative 1 to 1. So negative 1 means you have complete slipping. It's obviously slipping very hard. But that's something you don't want. You want to keep the slip ratio close to 0 because that's when the car is actually driving and the wheels can roll on the track. And positive 1 is for acceleration, right? So if you have positive 1, that's also very bad because then the car will, will it'll, you know, tumble over. So... When we combine the DC motor and the car, you have the following. The first equation for the motor current stays the same. But for the second one, you obviously have to look at the tire force. So that's FT. So FT times R divided by GR times J. So if you look before, the disturbance torque is equal to RW times FT divided by the gear ratio. Then you have the angle from the motor angular velocity. And these last two equations here, dv and dxp. So the car velocity is simply the force over mass. So that's the acceleration, dv over dt. And x is position, so we can get that from v. So these two we can easily solve from the above equations there. Because once you have ft, you have everything else. And for the car parameters, we look at the second table here. You have gr, the gear ratio is 2.5. So basically, that, that's just saying that the motor drive, the ratio between the back and the front is 2.5. The weight balance factor is about 37% or 0.37. The wheel radius is quite small at about 0.032 meters. The tolerance value I chose as 1 times to the power of negative 10, but this can be up to you. You could also put something like negative 6, for example. And the weight is 1.14 kg. Now, this is for me. This can be different for you, but the overall concept is the same. So now let's start with MATLAB and Simulink. And let's type in the model. We can save it first as run underscore first dot M. So first of all, we should type in the motor, the inductance, the resistance, all the values from the table. Moment of inertia damping factor and friction factor we have the car and the traction model as well so that's the mass of the car the wheel size the force of g the weight balance factor and the gear ratio 
Then we have the initial conditions. We will assume that it starts from zero, so they will all be zero. And we will use this later in the Simulink model, which you will see. The tolerance value should be something close to zero. The desired speed, now this number can be set to your choice. I just have a random number there. So these speeds will be set as the set point to the control system and we can adjust them based on performance. And this will be used in the Simulink model as well. The input voltage is a maximum of 12 volts. So we will just put that as a constant. If you run this model in the workspace, all the variables will show up and Simulink will take all the variables from there, which is very important for this example. Open a new Simulink model. Let's drag in some inputs there. Let's drag in a gain block. So now we are just modeling those differential equations. Now this process does need a bit of practice. However, I've made a video before on Simulink as well. So modeling a differential equation, you need to understand gain and integrator. Basically, I'm just dragging in parameters there. If you look at the equation here, you can see that it makes sense. A gain is just multiplying the signal by something else. And we can also add them up there, as you can see. I put the negative sign because obviously it starts off as a negative. So that's the integration there. So we can get the I value. Just copy the initial condition and paste it there. So connect it back because obviously that's the part of the differential equation. So that's the I. So we can just click and drag to copy the block and paste it again. So now we can do the motor speed as well. The same idea. You have to just connect a bunch of blocks. Uh, this process might be confusing for some of you, but if you look at the equation and if you do it, it's not very hard. Just understand that Simulink works in the exact same way as anything else. You just have to click and drag stuff and you have to make sure that all the variables are set to their correct values, especially the negative signs and everything, because that's very important. I'm basically taking each parameter from the ODE and putting it into a gain block because that's what multiplies the signal. So it's like multiplying two values together. Same thing for the speed, just copy the initial condition there. The integrator will just integrate the signal and you will get speed from the speed dot value. So you can also get the angular position there if you integrate twice. If you don't want to output something, drag in a terminator block. So we have this equation almost done. Just have to connect some more stuff. So connect that to speed. So that's your angular velocity omega m and then connected that there as well for the top equation dragging a from block this helps you route a signal it makes it much easier instead of dragging a line we can just drag in this tag so do one over m so from this value you can get the the car velocity and the car's position v and x if you look at the equation you will see that it makes sense ft is the force on the wheel which we will solve for after so copy both initial conditions there for speed and position x as you can see so connect them and everything so we are done most of our modeling we just have some more stuff left so now we can get for the other equations, we can get the values. So when we divide something by the gear ratio, we can just do 1 over gr, as you just saw. So that's the wheel size. So you can just subtract the values there. So we are solving for the slip here. The slip is the differences in the speeds divided by the tolerance value plus the velocity. We can save our model there. 
make sure you save every time because let's say your simlink will crash and then you can recover everything after so if you want to output something drag in the output block which we'll use after that and connect it there so we have the front speed the back wheel we can divide a signal here So now we are doing the slip value. So just dragging an addition block there, a constant. That's the value of the the very small number, which will be used to divide it. You can use the absolute value to get the absolute value of something, because for slip we will need the absolute value. If you look at the equation, you will see that it makes sense. So that's your slip ratio, right? Now drag in a saturation block because obviously it has to be defined from negative one to one. Only then we can calculate the friction as you see from the chart. We'll be doing the friction calculation with the MATLAB functions. So just drag in that. So we get the friction coefficient from slip. So make it Y as a function of S and connect it to the slip value. So we are getting to our final model. It's almost done. That's a normal force MGQ. So just drag in a gain block to multiply it by the friction value. So that's your wheel force. So that's your FT, which we used before and the from block, it loads there. Okay. Now let's edit the MATLAB function. So here you're just putting the formula which you can see on the screen it's only defined from negative one to one and that is why I put the saturation block before so put, put all the constants there and then just um, solve for the friction value so obviously you will have to put a negative sign if the slip is negative because then the friction cannot be negative that's impossible it has to always be positive so if you get a negative slip you will still get a positive friction which is crucial same concept there and output y equals mu because that's what we are outputting from the function right so so y is essentially the friction coefficient so drag across and make a subsystem to delete everything there so we have our subsystem there so that's your dc motor plus the car model if we run this it should run because we have the value there now drag in a bunch of blocks and put a 12 volt input and see the result. Make it 70 seconds to run for a long time. And here are the wheel speeds. So this is what we have without any control system design. It's just your open loop system. The slip is also very high and that is something that we don't want. The goal is to make it very low. So this graph shows you the speeds of the back wheel and the front wheel. Now you can see that the front wheel takes some time to speed up because obviously you have a lot of slip and you don't have any control system, right? So the objective is to keep the speeds of the back wheel and the front wheel the same. And we will do this with designing the speed controller and the slip controller. This is what happens in the real world. When cars speed up, they have to make sure that their slip is kept to a minimum because especially if it's like a wet surface, for example, like the winters here are quite bad. So, you know, that's why you have the winter tires, right? Like on your car. So like the idea is to keep the speeds of the wheels the same, especially in the startup time. Less than one. So now let's build our controller. So this will be a PID control, which I've done many videos on before. So your proportional gain is just the KP value. Here we have a gear ratio, it's a feedback. So we are using the back wheel because that, that's where the motor is connected. That's your proportional gain for speed control. And it can only be between negative, sorry, zero and 12 volts. So that's your input voltage there. That's your speed input. So. When you speed up a car, you obviously hit the acceleration, right? It's not like you set a constant speed. So we're doing the same thing here. We put a saturation there 
and this saturation value will be the desired speed which we set in the MATLAB model. So that's omega m underscore desired. Just copy that there and the lower limit can be zero because you obviously can't have a negative speed, right? <laughs> so we can drag in a scope block and then connect the two and then see what happens. But first we can change the solver settings, make it fixed step and ODE one, connect the scope and then run it. Change the scope settings to make sure that it saves everything. So our speed is 275, we have about 240.5, so we need to add a multiplier at start to make sure that, that the speeds match. So it's around 1.144. It's called the pre-compensator, as I've explained before. We can also output the slip ratio here, so just connect it there. So we have that now. Um, let's drag in a second PID block, but first let's connect this down there. Now we are doing the outer loop, which is the slip controller. So it's basically a double loop control system. We have two loops, they are cascaded, and we are doing multiple feedback. Now we are dragging in a switch. A switch is basically when the value exceeds something, it'll switch the input. And what I'm doing here is that the moment you reach the speed of the car, you turn off the slip controller. So basically when the speeds of the wheels match, you will disable the slip controller. So to turn off a controller, you just put zero there as the input. So it'll not do much. So that's your outer PID loop. Let's put the desired slip. It'll be a value close to zero at about 0 0.01. So that's your dual loop control system for the slip. And it's the switching method because obviously when the speeds match, you will not need the second controller anymore. So this PID value will be very small. It'll be about almost zero. So that's for your slip. If you run this whole thing here, we can drag in more scopes and then match the wheel speeds there. If you don't have the slip controller, you will have this result here. So the speeds are good, right? They match. But if you look at the first 10 seconds, then it's still pretty good. But the value of slip is very high. So this value we don't want, we want to actually use the slip controller. And if we now check it, the value drops a lot. So it's about 250, but that's very good because the value of tolerance is very low and you do benefit from using the slip controller a lot. So on the left, you have the initial result, what we had before without the control system. And on the right, you have the final design. You can see that there is a big change in difference, especially between the speeds of the wheel. Now, in this case, both wheels are the same. So that's very good. So we have been able to achieve a very low slip. And looking at the slip plots, you can see that we had something to 10 to the power of seven. Now that's only because of initially you have zero speeds, right? So the tolerance value is something like negative 10. So if you divide a small number by a denominator of something like negative 10, then it'll obviously go up. So that's okay. And we could still bring it down to about 250. So the real slip is still around zero because if you multiply 250 by 10 to the power of negative seven, it will be somewhere around zero. We have achieved a good controller design with keeping the slip minimum, especially in the first 10 seconds where that's when you have the most slip. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.